All right, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we welcome Wang Ching Tai from the EMBL EBI um, group based in the UK, I, I assume. <laughs> um, he will be talking to us about the FAIR principle, um, and he's a bioinformatician and data wrangler at the EMBL EBI, working in open data science platforms, specifically the Human Cell Atlas, and creating FAIR tools, the FAIR wizard, in collaboration with Elixir and the FAIR Plus program. So thanks so much for joining us today. And um, please, <laughs> um, go ahead. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, like I was introduced, my name is Wei Kang Tei, and I am a bioinformatician and data wrangler working not only at Embo EBI, but also working as part of the Awazi Data Models Working Group. So really glad to be able to be here today to present about the FAIR principles and how to make them work for you. So my presentation today is going to be broadly divided up into three sections. The first section is why FAIR? What are the FAIR principles? Why should I care about them? Like, why should I use them? What's the relevance towards me, my data set, my project? Why should I be invested in this? The second part of my presentation will be about the FAIR journey. How do I start? Hopefully by this point, I've convinced you about the importance of FAIR, about how it's useful to your project, your data set, or your community. And we'll be looking a little bit at some of the high level tools and frameworks and processes that we have developed to help you embark on this journey. And then the final part of my presentation will be about the practical details of the FAIR journey itself. How we can support you in taking you through the entire journey, how to pick out the lowest hanging fruit to get the most possible benefit for the least amount of work and how to be really efficient in performing this process. So starting with the FAIR principles, what is FAIR? The FAIR principles are an acronym come, that was developed by Wilkinson and his colleagues in 2016. Um, and this was developed specifically looking at life sciences, looking at good data management, looking at good data modeling. The acronym stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Some of these are self-explanatory, some of them less so. Findable, where can you find the data? Is the data accessible? Can you download it? Interoperable is whether or not it can be analyzed by a machine or a human, and whether or not the data is reusable. We are moving a lot away from data generation. Now it's really easy to generate huge amounts of data and much more into good data practice, good data management, because if your data can't be found if your data isn't out there, if your data isn't freely available on a place that can be discovered by people who want to use it, then the value of that data decreases dramatically. So you can think about from an Elwazi perspective that FAIR is a set of principles you can use to make sure your data has a high amount of value to your project and also to the community that you're working with. Why FAIR? So the, the three biggest reasons for following the FAIR principles are that following the FAIR principles saves you a lot of time, saves you a lot of effort, and saves you a lot of money. There's a survey created by the European Commission which shows that the rough cost per year of not having FAIR research data is about 10.2 billion. And this is because a lot of data scientists' time, about 80% of their time is actually spent cleaning up data, whether that data is stored in an Excel spreadsheet that isn't formatted correctly, or whether that data is stored in a text file, or you have a system for the data to be added into your database or your presentation, but someone else's system doesn't match up to yours. A lot of the time is spent looking for data of the right version, but even if you find the right data, it might not be precisely in the version that you're looking for. By following the FAIR principles, 
even if all of the separate databases and all of the separate projects don't necessarily have exactly the same standards, it dramatically reduces the amount of time, effort, and money it costs to use and gather and harmonize that data. And here at the LYZ Open, um, the LYZ Data Modeling Working Group, we really have this aim for being able to harmonize data across different projects. And that's why the FAIR principles makes a lot of sense to follow for us as a target. Apart from that, you also get additional impacts on research activities. The more your data is shared, the more your data is cited, the more there's a possibility for collaboration within different groups. There's a possibility for new insights to be found because that's also a lot of the way that science works by building on each other's efforts. Now, when to implement FAIR? I've very, very broadly divided up the stages of a project into project planning, project ongoing, data release, and data enrichment. I'm aware that a lot of the projects in Elwazi are at sort of a later project ongoing stage where a lot of the primary data has already been collected, but you have this primary data and you are tasked with analyzing it and discovering insights from it, but you maybe don't have that much of a chance to gather more primary data in a different way. I will address this case. And also by far the best place to start to implement FAIR is right at the beginning in the project planning phase. If there are any projects that you know of which are in this phase, it's so useful to implement FAIR in at this position. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why as well. The common submission process looks a little bit like this, with time on the x-axis and data management effort on the y-axis. You have someone in the lab set up some sort of data management system in Excel, in text editor, in any sort of program. And you go on and you generate data for years and years and years. You analyze your data. You get insights into your data, and then you want to publish your paper or send your data out to the community, and you hit a roadblock. You hit a massive cliff of what you need to comply with, of making your data fair, of community standards or domain-specific standards and schemas that you need to follow. And normally, you are tasked with this huge amount of effort right at the end when all of the data generation and all of the analysis has already been done. I've seen projects and I've worked with projects together with Fairplus and other people where, you know, three years of data generation, you have all of your data and then you suddenly have to transform all of it. It's another three years to get your data out there, which should really be one of the easiest parts of this entire process. So this is a cliff and this is a large amount of time, effort and money again, right at the very end of your research or right at the very end of the work that you are doing. This is not ideal. Um, instead, we really propose a better submission process where FAIR is built in from the very beginning. Instead of a cliff, you get this slow, steady ramp. You adopt community standards at the project start. You make sure that you have the proper consent forms and the proper consent that you need from the donors or the patients, wherever you're getting the data from. You make sure you have the proper licensing. So, it builds in at every single step and really allows for a lot more of a healthy research environment. And you don't have this massive cliff at the end, which means that you maybe you store your metadata already in the community standard. You don't have to transform from one format to another format. This means also at the end, when you want to share your data, you want to release your data, it's smooth, it's easy, you're already perhaps working with some of these archives or you know that the format that the archive uses is compatible with the format that you're using because it's a common data model. I know there's been a lot of talk about the OMOP common data model in Elwazi and in DSI Africa, and this is by far a much better submission process. So talking about this submission process um, and the two separate methods we have, it's very clear that curation is happening all the time. You know, verification as a retroactive workflow is very common. You have all of your data you want to publish and then, you know, a requirement comes up, whether it's from a funder or it's from a community, it says you have to make your data fair. Um, 
And this is very common and we can definitely help with this. And we're going to be working with uh, as many as the research data groups and as many data bases and as many projects as is possible. But I really want to impress upon you the importance of this data born fair. Um, verification by design is so much better because it helps save, again, that time, effort, and money. And here in Elwazi, or um, we don't have the huge amount of resources to step-by-step -step work with every single project. And we will try to do like as much as we can with all of the projects we can, but it will reduce the amount of headache and then the amount of work you will have to do if the project is already born fair. You can do things like data collection and consent from patients. You can pre-register samples. There's more opportunities to collaborate. Awazi is already doing part of this by having a project catalog, which shows what metadata different projects are collecting. Maybe you find another project that's collecting the same amount of metadata. There's an opportunity for collaboration there. You can work together and pull data that you have for further insights. You can adopt or create standards for data and metadata. If the standard isn't there, if it doesn't exist, you can, as a community, come together and create this. But all of this advantages really happen from verification by design. And it really lowers the amount of work you have to do at the end. The last thing I'm going to talk about with regards to why FAIR is the FAIR positive feedback loop. If you have a FAIR environment, then that generates more FAIR data. And more FAIR data means there's more clicks, there's more shares, there's more using of that data, more different collaboration between partners, and that leads back to more collaboration projects and more funding as well. I really strongly believe that having a fair environment, which is to say having data stewards, having data managers, having an understanding of how these different things all work uh, is really, really helpful to building a healthy scientific community and a healthy scientific environment. So, Hopefully I've convinced you about the importance of FAIR or maybe how it might be relevant to you or to your project or to your database. And next we're gonna talk a little bit about the FAIR journey, how we can get started some of the high level concepts and some of the tried and true tested tools that we've used together with real life projects and improving them. So I want to talk a little bit about where a lot of the tools and a lot of the experience and insight we have comes from. So we have been working together a lot with the FAIR Plus project, which is a project which is based on previous FAIR initiative experience and knowledge bases, such as the Go Fair um, initiative. What they did was take a set of different projects and measure their fair levels before they went through their process and then measure their fair levels after they went through their process of verification and then designed, tested, looked at each project, figured out what tools they needed, what process worked best, what amount of time worked best, how to organize everything into a way that we can now take advantage of and use. So the Fair Plus project, Really, uh, this is just a brief screen showing some statistics. Dark blue is all of the fair levels before their verification sort of journey or process. And light blue here, we have the fair levels after their verification cycles or after their verification processes. So there's been a lot of direct improvement. There's been also a lot of direct experience working with people. We really worked directly with these people in things called squad workshops, concentrated two, three day workshops. We come in, uh, you have a multidisciplinary team working together. We need your really strong understanding of what your project is and you come out with you know, a greatly improved fair system and idea of what things you can do. I'll talk a little bit more about squad projects slightly later. But first, I want to give you a sort of look at what the FAIR journey and the FAIR process is. So 
here we have the fair journey process. This is a process which is made, I said, I mentioned before, that we made together with Fair Plus, and it is a general agnostic template. Uh, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of different places. Uh, here on the left, we have defined verification goal. What is your goal? What do you want your data to be able to do that it can't do right now? And that's where you want to get to. Um, we have a project examination, which is where is your project currently at in terms of data requirements, capabilities, and then you have your fair cycles, which is getting you from your current location for your project to your goal. So just going to take a step back from this. There's a lot of detail on this slide. We're going to come back to it. I just want you to focus normally on those three things at the moment. Where is your project now? Where does your project want to go? And how you're going to get there? And I want to talk about this with relation to something we call the data maturity model. So the data maturity model is a model that we have developed. And you can see different levels of data maturity on the right. You have data object level, you have the project level, community level, cross community level, so on and so forth. It's really important to note here that higher is not always better. It really depends on your project. Fair improvements come at a cost. And we found that the cost doesn't always measure up to the benefit. There are some small things that you can do that really improve your project and point it into the direction it wants to go. And there are other things which also are very difficult to do that don't add that much value. Similarly, if you have a small project, you're sharing it with 12 other people, it's a small internal project, maybe you know, the project level of data maturity is what you need. You don't need a cross community level. It would be expensive to get there. It's not worth it to get there. It doesn't add any value. Maybe you have a larger project, maybe the LYC Open Data Science Platform, you're trying to pull together different communities together. You might want to be aiming for the cross community level or some aspects to be at the cross community level. It's also not individual pieces. You might have your data hosting environment be at the project level, but the content and context, the unique identifiers be at a different level. It really depends on which project you're working on. I think it would be really interesting to view your project through this lens. Where do you think your project is right now? And where do you think your project needs to get to based on your community, based on the people that you're trying to work with? Fortunately, we have some tools that can help you with determining not only your current level of fair, but also how you want to move from your current level to your goal. So the three things that I'm going to mention again here, what is the current fair status of your project? Where are you right now? What is the desired level of fair for your project? Where do you want to go? And how you get from current to desired? The tools that we have, we have a tool called the Fair Maturity Assessment. I'm going to talk a bit more about this in detail later on. This is a questionnaire and is a context project specific base. So it asks a whole number of questions and it spits out at the end your fair level of your project. There are lots of different ways of assessing maturity. The fair maturity assessment is one of them. You have, um, you have dual ontology codes, which can help talk about fair status, you have RDS, you have GoFair, you have Fair's Fair. There's a lot of different tools that are out there which can assess the current fair status of your project. The good thing about the verification process is that you can use any of them. You just want to do it before and at the end after you've done the process. We also have a tool called the Fair Wizard, which helps you get from your current level of fair to your desired level of fair, this takes a project, you give it the goal that you want, and you give it the sort of level that your fair project is at, and it gives you a set of concrete things that you can do. Say, you can add an API to your database. You can share and submit your data to a specific archive, which then makes all of your data public or all of your data now subscribes to a common data model, which is the community data model. 
And lastly, we have the Fair Cookbook. This is a set of recipes, basically. Lots of other projects that have gone through the same thing have had to go from one level of fair to another. We have examples of projects. We have the ways that they moved from one level to another, what cycles they did, how long of a time they took, what they broke down their steps into, what lessons they learned. All of these are available in the Fair Cookbook for your perusal and to learn from as well. So the question I get asked most often is defining a verification goal. That is difficult to do. And that is also hard to do. Like, how do you know what your verification goal is? So I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes a good verification goal and what goes into one. So when you're defining a verification goal, you want to think about what aspects of fair to improve. It's not always split into the findable, the accessible, the interoperable, the reusable. Sometimes it's split into is our data hosting good enough? Or is the way we represent data, does it subscribe to any common data models? Are we just typing in a lot of free text here? How do we want to make it better? Like I said before, not all fair efforts yield equal levels of benefit. It's really important here to get a really solid understanding of your project and look at this examination stage before jumping straight into the verification. This is a bit wordy, but what is the desired usability of the data that is not currently achievable? I'll give a couple of examples about this in the next slide. And you also want your verification goal to have a clear aim, scope, and value. Lastly, you can have multiple FAIR goals per project. In fact, it's better, much better to have multiple verification goals per project than one overarching large one that has too large of a scope, that has not very clear of an aim, that has all of your desired goals plugged into one. Don't have that. Have small, concise, fixed verification goals. You can have multiple of them per project. That is a good thing to have. I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of examples of verification goals here. So example one, to enable the integration of immunotyping data from the lung samples of our COVID-19 patients and the corresponding genome sequencing data of the viral isolate with external lung data sets of the same type to reduce the need for repeated analysis. We have a clear aim here. We want to enable integration of the immunotyping data. We have a clear scope only the lung samples from COVID-19 patients and have a clear value to reduce the need for repeated analysis by other scientists. So this is an example of a verification goal. I've realized just now that both of these are quite biochemistry focused, um, but verification can really apply to any sort of data. The second example we have here is to make the project's bioactivity data, that's the scope, comply with community standards and publicly available data, that's the aim, so that other researchers can easily reuse the data without repeating the compound identification and testing work. Really clear value, really clear scope, really clear aim. This is how you're going to also see what you can get from verification. Just a small note here, um, we would also <laughs> advise against having the word fair in your verification goal. If your goal is to say, I want to make my project more fair, um, the value isn't very clear, the scope isn't very clear, the aim isn't very clear. Um, as much as possible, try not to have the word fair within your own goal. So I've spoken a little bit about here about some of the high level concepts, you know, where your project is, where your project wants to go, your verification goal, and how you're going to get there, um, your implementation, and a little bit about the tools that we have here, looking at verification from a quite high level. Next, I'm going to go into the practical details of verification and how we've done a lot of verification and we have a strong knowledge of it and how we can help you or whoever is interested in this. My first point is that um, 
Verification is quite, kind of hard. It, it is an expert activity. It really requires cross-functional teams. You need um, people who really understand the data really well, people who have a good understanding of the project. You need people who are software engineers or people who are engineering the databases. You need data stewards or people who might be well-versed in maybe licensing of the data and how the data can be shared in a effective and a legal way, maybe data consent experts. You might want um, domain specific experts, subject matter experts who say, oh yes, this kind of data that has already a data model, which is really good for it. It already has a schema, which we should adopt. It should go to this archive. You really need um, a cross-functional team made out of lots of different levels of expertise and lots of different people working together. We did a lot of this. We you know, came up with specific work plans and processes for each plan and worked together with them to improve the level of fare they, they had. And I'll be talking a little bit about that with a case study in a second. Um, the other thing is data stewards. Data stewards or data wranglers, I know that they have different terms depending geographically where they are, are really key to this role. Um, they understand the data in terms of where it needs to go or how it needs to be stored or shared or archived. And having a data steward is really helpful and invaluable in this process. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a case study that we worked on in the FAIR Plus project called the CARE project. Uh, its aim was to deliver treatments for COVID-19 outbreaks, and it needed to screen 600,000 compounds across different libraries and was part of this IMI FAIR Plus verification project where they came to us and we did a FAIR maturity assessment and then we ran them through our verification process and we did a fair maturity assessment afterwards. And I'm going to talk about them in the context of this verification process. So we're really getting into the details here. Um, we're going to look at the goal, the examination, the iterative verification cycles, and the review. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what we can help with and how we help these projects through that way and how we can do the same for you. So defining verification goal, we've spoken a little bit about this already. It's to determine the desired usability of your data that's not currently possible. What do you want your data to do that isn't possible at the moment? So their verification goal was to publish data in open archives to comply with community data standards so that they could share identification and testing of compounds for therapeutic properties. So this immediately already gives you a couple of direct ways in which it improves your findability and your reusability. You can map to common data models. You can encode data reuse conditions in the metadata, make it clear what your data can be used for so that people don't have to feel ambiguous. That was their verification goal. Next, I'm going to look at the project examination stage. This is a really important stage of the verification process because we found a lot of the projects that didn't improve as much really was because they didn't have a really strong grasp of what their project was able to do or what their project had in terms of data requirements, in terms of verification capabilities and verification resources. So this is an example of the project examination phase for the care project. You have your data requirements here. It's things like what consent or licensing um, might be available, but also consent and licensing varies a lot from cohort to cohort in this specific time. You might have things like inconsistent use of identifiers, but you can map to standardize identifiers. So it's very much, again, that thing of where is the project now and where would the project like to go in terms of current and projected. You also have your data verification capabilities. You, know, you have data owners that need to clarify their data access and reuse criteria. What can you do about that? You have data verification resources. Maybe your data is only hosted internally. Maybe your data isn't available at all. 
what can you do? Are there any public resources that you can share them to? Um, like I said before, El Wadi is doing something like this already, where some of the metadata for these different projects is available on our El Wazi um, DSI Africa project catalog. And that's a good way of sort of starting this process. Um, but yeah, a lot of the times things slow down here because maybe a project might not be sure what license it has or what consent it has, or it has to go to a legal team and it slows down dramatically if you have to come back to this. So this project examination phase is really important for the verification process. You need to know where you are at. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the iterative verification cycles. So these are when we start to work towards our verification goal. Each cycle focuses on one specific goal. And we found here that a single three month release cycle works best. This is because it gives you time to work concisely towards one project and give you that time for monthly check-ins and validation, but also three months is a good amount of time because if not, then some of the verification goals might start to balloon out slightly. You might start to work on things which are no longer within your goal. What does this verification cycle look like? It looks like an assessment. Uh, this is a assessment which is made by the FAIR data maturity assessment, which I spoke about slightly earlier. It gives you a maturity level based on representation, content, and hosting. As you can see here, the overall maturity level is zero. This is pre the verification process. Then after that, you design. You want to make sure that you're doing all of this in a careful and considered way. You want to check what identifiers you are going to use. Are you using community available ones? Are you using a new bespoke standard that you're coming up with? What's your metadata strategy? What metadata is important for people to see from your project? What metadata is useful? How much metadata can you share depending on consent? Maybe also ontology strategies, is there an ontology or controlled vocabulary that's already in use for your project? And finally, data sharing strategies. So through this verification process, we've also defined these categories, which are useful to think about um, and will help in terms of each of these separate stages. We have a template, we have a work plan. You can just jump in there and use it for your own specific project. And then finally, implementation itself. This is a brief look at implementation. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a slide that I have later on, but this is just a group of tasks that you can do. It's really important to, in a project management sort of perspective, see what still needs to be done, what's in progress, what might not get done for whatever reason, and what is already complete. Now, at the end of this implementation process as well, you have yourself um, this later phase where you go through a post-verification review. So looking at the verification process as a whole, you have the verification goal, the examination, the cycles of assessment, design, implementation, and you continually improve on how you manage to accomplish this. Now you assess at the end, you say, how much have we improved? So in three months working together with this project, with the CARE project, we improved from a level zero to a level three in data set maturity. And that's a fantastic improvement. That's a vast improvement that came with a lot of buy-in from both the project themselves and us working together with them. As well as all of this, you pick up on how verification works. You start to become more of a fair environment by being involved in this. And the next verification cycle, working with the next goal you have for your data set and project really becomes a lot easier. I said before I was going to go back to implementation. We just had a very brief look at it. And um, I'm about to show what we have now called the verification template. So this process that's on the board right now, this is very agnostic. Any project can pick this up, use it with any kind of verification tool that might be useful for it. Now we're going to get slightly more specific. And instead of looking at the process in general, we're going to look specifically at the implementation. There is a lot on this page. 
like I said before, we're getting into the details now. Verification is a expert activity and is difficult, but also with the right team and with different people pulling together, you can get a large amount of value for not a large amount of work. This template that we have here really helps to identify the low hanging fruit. What are the things out of this? Data access, data retrieval, data standards, which data vocabularies? What are the things here that we can identify through a workshop, a squad meeting with us that can be maximum benefit to you given where you are right now? So this is the implementation process. We have different categories which are useful to think about. We have done this a bunch of times with different people in terms of what you really need to think about when you implement verification. But like I said, there's a lot here, but it is very doable and we can move very quickly from a low amount of data maturity to a high amount of data maturity if we run through this verification process right with the right people. And I've been showing sort of bits and pieces of the verification work plan throughout the entire webinar. I've been talking about you know, the verification goal, examination, assessment, and this is how it looks like put all together. This work plan, which is tailored specifically to a project, we can give you the sheet, we can work together with you at a workshop to come up with your own work plan. This is a project specific work plan. So we've gone from a process which works for everyone, a template specifically focusing on implementation, to now a project specific work plan, all that's been developed by a lot of experience and a lot of real life work with real life projects that we can now thankfully take advantage of. Um, in the care project, they you know, had a huge number of data sets that were then suddenly in Kemble, that were then publicly available, instantly more visible. They subscribed to lots of different models and they, it was just a massive improvement to get all of these data sets now suddenly available and visible on a public level. Lots more data being used, lots more data being shared. And that's an example of the things that we can do um, through verification. So last couple of slides now, the take home message. I spoke a little bit at the beginning about why FAIR. Why is FAIR important? Why should you care about it? What's the relevance to you, your project, your data set? It's important because like I said before, it saves so much time, effort, and money, and it prevents you from having this huge cliff. We spoke a little bit about born FAIR, about the advantages for having data and FAIR principles built into every part of your project, not right at the end. You don't have to go through that headache and that pain of trying retroactively to look at how the data was generated in the first place six years ago. We spoke a bit about the data maturity model, um, where you are, where you want to be, uh, where it might be really interesting to see where your project fits on that data maturity model and where you would like to get to on that data maturity model. And then we had a dive into the practical details of the verification process. How does it actually work? And what would it look like in terms of squad workshops, squad meetings, workshops? So please feel free to reach out to us. Um, that's my email there. Uh, Lyndon's email, I forgot to put on there, but I'm sure you can get it from um, Rolanda or the organizers. Um, squad meetings are quite intense sort of compressed versions where you get a lot of people in the room at the same time. And because everyone has their own domain knowledge and their own expertise. It works really well to pull apart the project, to look at where you are now, where you need to go and come up with that work plan, identify what you need to do for the maximum benefit. Just one or two things from that wide implementation. And they really, really do work effectively. Um, and yeah, just looking a little bit at the data maturity model, thinking again about like, you know, where your project might like to be at and how we specifically can help you along that process and support you to get there as the Awazi Data Modeling Working Group. So thank you.
uh, just like to acknowledge some of the people we work with at Fair Plus that developed some of the fantastic things, um, um, some key individuals and the AIT team that I work with. Thanks. Thanks so much. Um, I've also just posted your email address here in the, in the chat. <laughs> um, but thanks so much for this really interesting um, presentation. There was a few comments earlier in the chat. Um, but the floor is now also open for to take questions um, from the audience. Um, and you can unmute yourself or raise your hand if you want to ask your question via audio, but you're also more than welcome to post your questions in the chat. So Laura is asking if we will make the slides available. Yes, we will do that. Yeah, I see there's a question from um, Daniel about whether the tools are open source or proprietary. Um, I'm just going to go back quickly to slide where I spoke a bit about the tools. Um, the FAIR Wizard, FAIR Maturity Assessment, and FAIR Cookbook are all available. I'll add links to them um, before I share the slides with um, Rolanda, so the they will all be accessible um, to you, and there'll be links there that you can use to get to them and play around with. If you have any questions about them, feel free to contact either Lyndon or myself. And yeah, like I said earlier, like if anyone, any of the research hubs, any projects are interested in working with us, we would really like to engage with you and get working, setting up some of these workshops or setting up some of these meetings to just get going on some of this clarification work that can really give a lot of value to your data sets or projects. Anything else? But yes, I was just trying to see if there was a hand up. Right, so Lori is saying it's a workshop in verification is to do a visual for our DSI trading program. Yeah, um, we can talk more about that. Very happy to engage with that or support that or um, help with that in any way we can. I think this webinar was sort of a first step in talking again about some of the concepts we shared at the Datathon that we had last year. <laughs> Right, yeah, I think folks are still getting their heads wrapped around um, verification process. So the more information we have on the, on this is really the working to improve that knowledge. All right, if there's no other questions, then I'm gonna thank you so much, Ray, for um, presenting this to us today. Um, and we will definitely be in touch um, for the interest in, in, in a possible workshop. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you are part of the LWASI, so I'm sure we will get to see you on the data management working group. Well. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day, Thursday. Thanks. Thanks.